Today's species spotlight is one of the most unique and oddball species of colubrid snake that we keep in the hobby, and that is the greenish rat snake. And I know what you're thinking, Jay-Z fubbed again, but no, the greenish rat snake is one of the only truly recognized hybrid or integrated animals that we keep in the hobby. Now there is a whole bunch of contention when it comes to hybrids and integrates, both natural and the in captivity. However, the greenish rat snake being a natural integrate that is found in the wild between the black rat snake or the eastern rat snake and the yellow rat snake. The ranges overlap along the east part of the eastern part of the United States between parts of South Carolina all the way down to the panhandle. And because they are both members of the genus Pantheropus and depending on who you want to fight with, they're both members of Obsoleta, different subspecies. And there is, I know, some contention between that. They actually do vary quite a bit in appearance and in size. Now, the, when you think about the eastern rat snakes, they tend to be the longest, the black rat snakes, or if that's what we want to go with, they tend to be the longest of North American rat snake species. They tend to be a little bit more heavy bodied than the yellow rats. And while most rat snakes are born that kind of like grayish color with the darker saddles, the black rat snakes tend to keep those saddles as well as sometimes they get like almost solid black with the white underbelly sometimes keeping a little bit of more like rusty orange red colors here or there depending on where they are and parts where they overlap in uh the greenish rat snake range they tend to be a little bit more darker in coloration tend to be the yellow rat snake is usually a little bit more slender still achieving lengths of more than five six feet long at times they tend to be a little bit more arboreal and Unlike the eastern, the black rat snakes, they lose their saddles and they tend to be the fully striped animals with that yellow coloration. When they hybridize or integrate, a lot of times what happens is they get this kind of olive, kind of off yellow greenish color, hence greenish rat snake. They, as adults, they can both lose their saddles and become fully striped animals, or they can in fact be blotched like you would normally think of like a gray or a black rat snake. So that's why they can be varying quite a bit. Now, when the whole integrate and hybrid thing, there's a whole lot of contention that goes on with that. And there are actually quite a few different hybrids or debated hybrids that we have in the reptile keeping community. For instance, the Tessera corn snake might be the most famous of which, um, and that is that they think originally that the Tessera corn snake was a hybrid of a corn and then a Californian king snake. The morph was found to be genetic and they carried that back breeding back into just pure corn snakes. And that's how we get the Sarah corn snake. There are plenty of other ones out there. There's, you know, the boa imperators and boa constrictors, both hybridizing in the wild and in captivity. Ask any of the carpet people about pure jungle carpets. And yes, carpet people, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And then obviously the continuous debate about speciation between North American king snakes, rat snakes, gopher snakes, and all different species and subspecies. So it's actually very difficult once you get down to the nitty gritty of actually keeping North American colubrids what is a pure animal other than just a straight pluck from the wild locality. Other than the greenish rat snake, which is really, really cool. That's what makes them so kind of unique and oddball because of that. Now, there is a second thing about the greenish rat snake that makes them super, super cool. There is a name that some people, once they kind of start getting into more colubrids and stuff, that they probably recognize that they don't originally and instantly associate with the greenish rat, and that is moonshine. You may have heard of the moonshine rat snake, and this is where it gets really interesting. The moonshine is an actual naturally occurring morph that was found in a wild animal. A guy named Jim Godfrey that lives in Horry County, South Carolina. I don't know if he necessarily lives there, but that's just where he was. He found what looked to be some sort of albino or hypomelanistic greenish rat snake. And he legally pulled it from the wild. He has even the mile marker and the exact GPS location of where he got it. He doesn't share it with anybody. And then he brought it home. It was a male. A little while later, he went back to within 100 yards of where he found that very first male. He found a more normal phenotypical looking animal as far as the greenish rat goes. It was blotched. It wasn't striped. Neither was that um, weird looking male that they found that either hypo or albino, whatever it was, they're both blotched animals. The female looked a little bit different, but it was still that normal looking greenish rat snake. Brought it home, gave it a little while, they he paired them together and they reproduced. And then essentially what he did was he proved out that this moonshine rat snake is just a simple recessive. And they believe 
that it is probably a T positive or a tyrosinase positive albino animal. The simple recess of T positive, that is the moonshine. There is some variability, obviously, being with that integrate and the very variable animal that it is to begin with. They oftentimes are blotched, harkering back to that original male, but I have seen striped individuals that get outcrossed out further. There's a couple different ones that seem to be more of a yellow and more of a white, but they are still both that tyrosinase positive moonshine rat snake. Obviously the moonshine harkens to like the, the coloration of it as well as you know a lot of the stuff that I with prohibition and moonshine in that area, which gives it a really cool kind of very unique American feel to this animal. Now, if you decide you want to keep a greenish rat, there's actually quite a few people that are starting to work with these guys. I'm seeing them more and more often come up even with like the more typical ball python people that you normally associate with. I'm starting to see more colubrids starting to come back in the fray, the greenish rat being one of them. They do theoretically get a little bit larger than corn snakes, but coming from similar areas, their keeping is quite similar as well. So a very easy animal to be able to keep in captivity. They do love to climb. Both yellow rats and black rats, and obviously the greenish rat hybrid, do like to climb. So whatever you decide to keep them in, give them a little bit of height so that way they can climb. They like to perch up. They're generalists in their actual natural habitat. They'll eat birds, they will eat reptiles, obviously mammals, and they also have a little bit of propensity for liking nesting bird eggs. And yes, this is how the greenish rat snake adds to the list of something like 20 species of North American colubrids that people like to call a chicken snake because they will often find these guys in and amongst their chicken coops eating both the eggs and the newly hatched chicken. So essentially, if you want an animal that you can give a very generalistic diet to, to vary things up to try to give a more naturalistic experience without worrying about hunger strikes or picking favorites like you would with something like a ball python, theoretically, then a greenish rat snake would be a good animal for you. As you can see, the only one that I actually have in my care is the primary video that you've seen, the B-roll of this entire video. He's my one little male moonshine rat. I'm planning on getting a female greenish at some point there. Uh, down the road at some point, I have no real, real ambition to breed them, but hey, why not? I would really like to because I think they're a really cool species. So if you guys are really interested in greenish rat snakes, Hopefully you can find a really cool breeder out there. Like I said, they're kind of popping up everywhere. I'm seeing them in stores more often. And now there is this colubrid fest that's gonna be happening this fall. So if you guys can make it out to Indiana, I don't know if I will or not, it'd be really fun to go do. You can absolutely go check them out and there'll probably be quite a few moonshine rats there, both as babies and as adults to see how really cool these animals are. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you wanna see other species spotlights or other videos, please check out the playlist here. Please like and subscribe. And I should probably do a little quick thing here at the end as well. Every like nine or so months, I get kind of like a big several hundred to a thousand plus subscribers that kind of adds on. And when people are going back and rewatching some of my older videos, I've gotten much better about editing them and catching my flubs and mistakes. When you are editing your own videos, you have, a, when you misspeak, your brain, because you said it, thinks that that was correct and you miss a lot of stuff. I've gotten much better about it, but I'm starting to get a lot of the, oh, you misspoke this. It's like Timor pythons are not actually from Timor. I super know. Uh, all the, the bull snakes, they're from Stillwater, Oklahoma. They're not from Stillwater, Texas. I know that was a flub, just that sort of thing. So give me a little bit of slack. I do appreciate you calling me out. Please continue to do so whenever I make a mistake like that. And again, as always, if you'd like to see other reptile content, questions, comments, concerns, there's the link down uh, at the description of this entire video. You can always message me on other social media as well if you're interested in anything like that. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope everyone's having a great day. I'll check you next time.